So I recently did a poll asking the question, what era from Earth's history would you like me to cover more? And although there was a healthy mix of all three, there was one clear winner, the Paleozoic. And I was actually kind of surprised at first, but in hindsight, I probably shouldn't be. I love dinosaurs, but you all know the truth is that they get all of the attention. In fact, so much so that the way that most people who have a basic understanding of paleontology think of it is the age of dinosaurs, everything before the dinosaurs, and then everything after the dinosaurs. So dinosaurs are actually seen as like a unit of measurement in layman's terms. And then things like Dimetrodon are usually stuck with the term dinosaur until you get old enough to learn that not every big extinct lizard is a dinosaur. So I definitely get you guys point. And although I want to continue to talk about all different creatures that have existed throughout Earth's history, I will definitely take this into account. That being said, I think I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this one, because what I wanna talk about is first of all, a little bit of a hot take. So for those of you who don't know, the Mesozoic is divided into three periods, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. However, and try to hear me out on this, I feel like the Triassic shouldn't really be considered part of the Mesozoic. Because if you define the Mesozoic as the age of dinosaurs, then the Triassic really doesn't fit that definition. Sure, there were dinosaurs during that time, it's when they first evolved, but they were in no way the dominant force uh, across the supercontinent Pangaea the way that they would be during the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. In fact, the Triassic was really anyone's game. There were so many weird and wonderful groups that came up during this time, all struggling to become dominant over the rest. And that's something I really wanna talk about because the more I looked into this subject, the more I started to realize one thing stood out about all of these animals. They're so freaking weird. Why? Why are they so weird? This is by far the most bizarre time in Earth's history. The animals that appeared during this time were like straight up bonkers. And I find them absolutely fascinating for this reason. And I want to talk about them. So this is going to be my list of the top five weirdest Triassic animals. And then next week, I'll be exploring the reasons why evolution went a little bit buck wild there for a bit before settling into the true age of dinosaurs in the Jurassic. And quick disclaimer, as I'm writing this, I have absolutely no idea how I'm even going to pick a top five weirdest of these animals. So if you all like this video and the next one coming up, maybe I'll make more videos talking about more of these oddballs. Seriously, the entire period was like a Dougal Dixon fever dream. At number five, we have a species from a group of animals that seemed like they were trying to do the whole upright bipedal carnivorous reptile with a robust head thing before the dinosaurs. And for about 50 million years, they were probably one of the main factors keeping the true dinosaurs from taking over. In fact, the Rawasukians were doing almost everything that the theropods would perfect later. It was just one of the many, many forms that the archosaurs would take throughout the Triassic. And this particular group was some of the largest predators of the time, some species reaching up to 20 plus feet long, with one notable exception found in Argentina called Fasolasuchus. This monster lived around 217 million years ago and is believed to have grown up to 10 meters or 33 feet long. Now, Postosuchus is the most famous of this expansive group due to its part in the first episode of Walking with Dinosaurs. But at nearly twice the size, Fasolosuchus was literally, and I hate to use this term, but the T-Rex of the Triassic. And besides large theropods, this is the biggest terrestrial carnivore ever known. Living in the later part of this period, they probably evolved to be this size in order to hunt some of the first dinosaur groups that were starting to get big, the early prosauropods. Honestly, I find it very surprising that these animals aren't better known. They were closer related to crocodiles than true dinosaurs and likely looked very much like a cross between the two. Or maybe we should really say that theropods look like them because they actually did it first. 
Up next, we have to go back about another 40 million years to the early Triassic around 249 million years ago, when the world was first starting to recover from the greatest mass extinction that it has to this day ever experienced. And because of this, there was a great deal of ecological niches left open for new animals to spread into. And the first animals to step into the apex predator role was a basal group of archosaurs that would be the first to start tapping into the semi-dinosaur-like skull design and general aesthetic. The group is referred to as the Erythrosuchians, and they lived across Pangaea throughout this time. But by far the most well-documented species is Erythrosuchus itself. Found in the Karoo Basin of what is now South Africa, these guys look superficially kind of like a monitor lizard with bulkier bodies, growing up to around 16 feet long or 5 meters. With one notable difference though. They sported an absolutely ridiculous head. In some species of this group, the head makes up one-fourth or even one-third of the total body length, and these disproportionate dimensions probably came with an equally ridiculous bite force. And they probably used that to claim the title of top predator in the early Triassic, until they would ultimately be replaced by the more powerful archosaurs, like the previously mentioned Fasolosuchus. So right from the start of this period, there were some bizarre animals running around. Next up, we're going further down the rabbit hole of weirdness to see one of the most widespread animals from the early Triassic. And this one is pretty strange, so much so that when this animal was first discovered, scientists really didn't know what to make of it. It was originally thought of as an early relative of pterosaurs until they realized that what they thought was long finger bones for wings was actually the animal's neck. It was given the name Tanistrophius, and it's been perplexing some of the brightest minds of paleontology ever since. This animal was 20 feet long, or 6 meters, and was literally half neck. And what this adaptation was used for has taken a really long time to figure out. After all, things like this don't just pop up in nature for no reason. The first major clue came when specimens were found with the remains of fish in their stomachs. This led many to speculate that it may have used its neck in a similar way as long neck plesiosaurs in the Jurassic Oceans. And that was the prevailing theory for a while. However, there was no way that Tanistrophius could swim through open water like a fully marine reptile with its tiny limbs. So now, the more recent theory is that it lives similar to a heron wading in the water and at the water's edge and using its tiny head at the end of a long stiff neck like a fishing line to snag unsuspecting fish. So kind of think of it as like a cross between a wading bird, a plesiosaur, and a snapping turtle. Yeah, it's a weird dude. To finish out the last two spots, we have to jump forward again to the late Triassic. And honestly, if you really want to rank these from least to most weird, these last two are pretty interchangeable. But they definitely both deserve the title of Go Home Mother Nature, You're Drunk. And until now, I have at least been able to make some comparisons between these and some other animals we currently have today, or we know of from other points in Earth's past. But now we're going full alien space bats because we're talking about the Draponosaurs. This is the animal that I posted the picture to see if anyone could guess what creature I was talking about in the community tab earlier this week. Because it literally has traits in common with chameleons, the tamanduas, and the head of a bird. It's probably one of the most confusing organisms in Earth's history. And it was made even worse by the position that almost all the specimens that have been found were fossilized in. They're normally found with either their face tucked away among their arms and upper torso, or the head missing altogether. But as we started to find better fossils, we came to realize just how odd this creature was. It's believed to have been a tree climber, with claws on its front limbs, like a sloth or tree climbing anteater. It had a long muscular tail that seems to have been prehensile, and it appears to have had a spur or claw at the end of its tail. 
probably for increasing its grip on branches. And then when you take all of that and put a tiny bird head and a thin neck at the end of it, now you've reached full platypus levels of mismatched weirdness. It was probably an insectivore who evolved to be arboreal both for access to food that many other animals were not utilizing, as well as avoid Pangean predators like the Ralasukians and early dinosaurs like Herrerasaurus. Despite all these traits being so reminiscent of different modern day animals, these were evolved independently and the Draponosaurs have no modern relatives today. It was part of a group of animals that to this day, scientists have debated on where it even fits among the reptile family tree. But whatever they are and however they were living, they seem to be pretty successful, being found on multiple continents. So you're probably wondering what could possibly outweird a chimera like Draponosaurus. And to find the crown jewel of the Triassic freak show, we need only come down from the trees. We talked a little bit about how the role of apex predator changed hands from one group of archosaurs to another during the roughly 50 million years of the Triassic. Well, the same is true for the herbivores as well. By the late Triassic, one of the most common herbivores was also one of the most bizarre animals to ever live, a genus of rhynchosaur called Hyperodapodon. So, Picture a cross between an iguana and a naked mole rat, then put its beady little eyes way too close together and give it multiple rows of teeth. At least that's how the fossil skulls have made it appear, and thus how most paleo art has depicted it since it was first described in 1859. However, recent evidence suggests that it may have had a beak made of keratin. No matter what it really looked like though, there's one thing that the fossil record tells us for sure about this old dirt gremlin. It was shockingly successful. I'm not kidding. Literally every continent where fossils have been found that are dated to this part of the Triassic have shown evidence that Hyperodapodon was there. And in some cases, they make up like 80% of the fossils found in those layers. They were literally everywhere. I imagine you probably couldn't walk a few hundred feet without almost stepping on one. But in all seriousness, despite this animal having what looks like a very strange body plan, you can't argue with the results. These creatures were so successful and abundant during this stage of the Triassic that scientists use its remains as an index fossil whenever they find new layers that haven't been dated yet. Because no matter how successful they were, they abruptly died out at the end of the Triassic. So anytime that they see rocks with the remains of Hyperodapodon in them, it's a dead giveaway that these rocks are from the late Triassic period. And come to think of it, that's something that I've literally said five times today. Despite these animals being so strange, every single one of them was hugely successful. And despite all these animals having no modern direct descendants, for a time during the Mesozoic, these were the ruling animals. So I hope you all enjoyed this first look into some of the weirdest creatures from the Triassic period. This is a video that I've been thinking about doing for a while now, but I didn't really know how to approach it because there were just so many different bizarre animals from this time period. Now, I was only able to make a list of five this week, and I may go back and talk about these guys a little more in depth in the future. And there are countless more that I didn't even get to at all. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving it a like and commenting and saying so. Maybe if this is well received, I'll turn it into another series. Who knows, maybe I'll make a tier list of the weirdest Triassic animals and build it over several episodes or something. But next week, I plan to make a bit of a different video on this topic, where I'm going to be giving an explanation as to why we think things got so weird during this confusing time from Earth's past, and why we would never quite see the likeness of these strange creatures again. So stay tuned for that. It's a fascinating topic, and I can't wait to cover it. See you all next week, everybody.